We're talking Marvel, we're talking fruit, and we're talking vampires. It's all coming up in 3 Up, 3 Down, starting now. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brian and Jack from Simple Man's Comics, where we are helping to amplify your comic collection through integrity and community. We do a lot of comic pop culture content on this channel, so if you're new here, consider subscribing. This is 3 Up, 3 Down, where in this video we're going to talk about three picks that are hot and three picks that are cool in the comic collecting market right now, starting with 3 Up, and that starts with Black Widow. Trailer just hit. Everyone's well aware of it right now. Phenomenal. Everyone's looking for that movie. That movie's got some hype. So naturally, the market is speaking, and we're seeing some Black Widow keys rise. That's right, Brian. And you know, the funny thing is, there's been a lot of negative talk throughout the internet about the trailer and how kind of fans have received it. But that has not stopped a lot of different books from spiking. And I think it's the case of kind of the loudest minority of people um, kind of taking over internet forums because we've seen Deadly Origins number two, the Black Widow miniseries, the one in ten, Adi Granoff variant, which features that white suit takeoff, um, selling for thirty to forty dollars. We've seen Yelena Berlova um, keys, whether it's Black Widow number one from nineteen ninety nine. Or in Humans number five, where she becomes Black Widow takeoff. We've seen Marvel Fanfare 11 and 12, which is, of course, the first appearance of Iron Maiden takeoff. We've seen Avengers 43, which is, of course, the first appearance of the Red Guardian, start to rise back in value. Once was one of the hottest books on the market, fell a bit, and now with the trailer, that book is back on the rise. And, of course, Avengers 195 and 196, the first appearance of Taskmaster. Now it's going to be anxious to see these books go on the rise, but then once the movie comes out, some of these characters that have been highly sought after, or these books are being bought up, the movie comes out, character doesn't have as big as a role, and those books plummet again. But either way, some of my favorite reads, not even some of my favorite covers, huge Phil Noto fan, so I love all those Black Widow Phil Noto covers when he was doing the art for that series not too long ago. But either way, trailer's hot, and those comics are hot. Now, I did say we're going to be talking about some fruit during this video, and we are talking about Peach Momoko. Comic book artist right now, a lot of those variants are seeking popularity, artist on the rise. You just saw it recently with Fallen Angels number two, but that's not the only book that's popular right now, is it, Jack? No, I mean, talk about timely, Spider-Man Venom Double Trouble number two, the one in 25 variant that released just today is absolutely on fire, um, selling for 40 to $50 already, and we're... Um, we're filming this on Tuesday, and that book has been red, red hot, uh, low printed series. But you know, it's the, it's not just those two; those are the two kind of latest and greatest. But she's also got a North Carolina Comic Con uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 100 variant that has been on fire, kind of a, a old school Japanese look. And of course, her Ghost Spider number two, one in 25 variant, which has become kind of like a Ghost Spider classic. And then some of her older stuff, like Marvel Rising number one, the one in 25. I was going to say, wasn't there like a Marvel Rising, or I was thinking Supergirl, or Cap not Supergirl, but Captain Marvel, but yeah, it was Marvel Rising that I was thinking of. Yeah, Marvel Rising number one, that one in 25, it started to rise in value up to about $40. And we're starting to see action on some of her kind of lesser popular variants like silver surfer black number four which has started to raise from like the 12 to 15 dollar level up to like 18 to 25 and it's funny because that one when it came out the marvel rising actually came out with a little bit of a peak so when that silver surfer variant came out people were kind of thinking that was going to do the same and it didn't do as much no doubt artists is gaining popularity some of those books are being sought after but for me still not a big fan some of the art I think is okay, but it's just not in my wheelhouse. So I'll let everyone else buy those up. Then the last topic we got on the three up portion of the show is Dr. Afra. Star Wars is all the buzz right now between the movie, between Disney Plus, between Mandalorian, between Disney's Galaxy Edge at the parks. We got the new ride that's getting ready to open up at Disney World later at Disneyland. But either way, Dr. Afra is definitely gaining some popularity right now. That's right. Now, we did just recently a top five back issue bolo of modern Marvel Star Wars first appearances, and we didn't include Dr. Aphra. We did that basically because she's kind of like the most well-known, sought-after, already-in-demand book, and we were looking to give value 
by highlighting books that you could find in back issue bins. You are not finding Dr. Afra cheap. She's been in demand for quite some time, but she is spiking right now due to some rumors. And it's important to note that it's rumors. I think the market's getting very confused these days on what's like official announcements versus rumors, but that a Disney Plus series is on the way. And it, it's no surprise that that rumor has kind of ignited the market because The Mandalorian is absolutely on fire. The show is near perfection. So comic fans are already anticipating what is going to be the follow-up. Darth Vader number three, the first appearance of Dr. Aphra and her two droids, which it's important to note the droids because they are a big part of her character and kind of uh, uh, profile as a whole. Uh, that book is on fire. First print, second print, third print, all the way to the fourth print and the one in 25 La Roca variant. Um, something that is starting to rise now is Dr. Afro number one variant. It's long been undervalued. The 1 in 25 Rod Reese variant, which features the droids on the cover, has seen kind of fluctuating prices, anywhere from $15 to $40. So that is one to be on the lookout for. There's also some store exclusives that for a long time many stores were selling in their clearance sections. Yeah, now is the perfect time of year to be looking for those for cheap because a lot of these places are having huge sales right now. Between Cyber Monday, they just passed. Black Friday, they just passed. But they still have sales because they're trying to get rid of inventory, especially with the Christmas season. So they're trying to engage shoppers. So be on the lookout for those. We're going to move right now into the three down portion of this video, starting with V Wars. You'd think V Wars would be on the up. It kind of was on the uptick about a week or so ago when that trailer hit for that Netflix show. I think. This is one of those ones that's on the down, but could see a spike, especially as we get closer to the show being released. And it's got a great writer to it. It is a good series, especially if you're looking at it just from a reader point of view. But either way, we are seeing decline or loss of attention span on V Wars right now, aren't we, Jack? Absolutely. It's really a loss of attention. Um, you mentioned when the trailer hit, there was a spike, but the spike was very minimal. There were some sales that kind of got active again, but it really wasn't even for the kind of original demand and of pricing that we had seen for the series kind of with its inception um, and in its initial popularity or when the Netflix series was announced. I think a lot of people aren't quite totally aware that December 5th, this show is going to be live on Netflix. And that's going to be the key is what is the success of the show? If the show is a success and it builds on popularity and the beauty of Netflix is it doesn't have to happen day one. Um, it can be kind of a snowball effect, but if the show becomes popular, these books are going to sell. And if you at all are a believer in this series, I, it's personally one of my favorite reads of the last few years. Now is the time to pick these books up. Um, you have incentives for number one you have uh, convention variants you have the kevin eastman subscription variants i think are a great buy because a lot of them are as low as cover price he did the, the subscription variants i think for like the first seven books also be on the lookout for that free comic book day issue that came out that's essentially an issue zero um, which has the kevin eastman art i think sets of those kevin eastman variants are going to do very well i am a believer that these this book and this series is going to have its day and now is kind of the time to be looking at some of these undervalued listings and possibly pull the trigger and that's the beauty of the down section of the list is we talk about this all the time a lot of times it provides buying opportunities Next one on the three down portion of this show is Birds of Prey Keys. We're talking about trailer hit. We don't know what's going on with this movie. Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? But either way, that's tying over to the comics. And we're seeing that as down right now. Well, even more than that, Brian, I'm not hearing people talk about this movie. Um, there's a lot of kind of renewed excitement again around... DC properties surrounding kind of like the HBO deal. Well, and it's, um, sorry, but it's weird also is I've seen some ads on YouTube, but that Harley Quinn animated series right now is streaming on the DC app, but I haven't heard much buzz behind it. No, not at all. And I actually got an opportunity to watch the first episode. I think it's a series people will like because it's very R rated. So it's it's a big time departure from like the typical uh, animated movie that DC puts out. There's a dozen curse words in the first five minutes type thing. So um, it, it is a, a very different, a very adult depiction of Harley Quinn. But really, that's what this is all about, Brian. This this 
down pick is all about Harley Quinn. Yes, that Oracle first appearance of um, Oracle number one, first appearance of Birds of Prey is absolutely down. Um, it is not what it was even at the announcement spike, um, no doubt. But it, it really goes deeper than that. Um, the side characters really aren't – it's really about demand. There's not huge demand for the characters in this movie, but the biggest thing is Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn first appearances can be had in the mid-200s right now. And that, if you've been kind of tracking that book over the last, say, seven or eight years, that is as low as it gets. Um, even 9.8 nine, nine, recently went out for 1,500. Just two months ago, that was 1,900. So we're seeing drops in demand for this character. And I think whether it's, you know... The trailer that doesn't have people excited, the fact that she's associated with um, a team here versus it being a solo movie, the lack of excitement that seems to surround the upcoming Suicide Squad movie, um, the kind of lack of awareness of this adult-themed uh, animated series. It just seems like when we've talked about this on a few other programs, Harley Quinn is missing the mark right now and, uh, you know, could provide good buying opportunities these books could be undervalued what the market will eventually end up saying they're worth. But, you know, I, I, right now, th this movie looks to be in trouble. Yeah, who knows? Hopefully we're pleasantly surprised. I want to yeah. say I have a lot of faith in Suicide Squad since James Gunn is behind it. But what you see with a lot of DC movies is directors get their cut and then Warner Brothers go back in and chop it up and make a completely different movie after the fact, which is why we get hashtags release the Snyder cut. But moving on into the last three down topic this week, we're talking about 2099. Now this one is to me, we've talked about it on this channel between other shows, between the Bola show, between last call show. I know you're not as much. I know I'm not as much as big a 2099 fan. Yeah. Um, so I, I have a new video series that I'm, Premiering on another platform that will then get kind of put together and collected here on the Simplements Comics YouTube channel. And I was doing some research to talk about 2099. And I was really stunned at the kind of selling prices of the original 2099 books, including Spider-Man 2099, a book that we all had high hopes for being a book that was going to see some spikes. Uh, it, it seems like all 2099 books have kind of gone back to their original demand. And their original selling prices, so we're talking just a couple dollars. Uh, I believe, and I made the point in the video, that Marvel has dropped the ball tying in the original 2099 to the current 2099. I think that too often times publishers are not calling back to those back issues and using them as tools to sell their current upcoming series. And you know, a la Donny Cates. <laughs> yes, yes, who, who does who does a great job of it. Um, but it's the publisher should be the one who is kind of uh, spearheading that. I think that also there's a divide between buyers, right? Buyers who are buying 2099 or are more apt to buy 2099 are our age because we remember when the original 2099s were released. Now, we, sorry, do you think that might change going forward with Kevin Feige coming in? I think it could. Um, but again, it, we, we, there's so much we don't know about how he's going to handle the publishing side. I mean, he's been an absolute genius with how he's handled the movie side. But th this issue isn't really a Marvel issue. I think it's a comics issue in general. I don't see a single publisher on the market ever referencing back issues it, because they don't feel like they make direct money off them. So what they'll do is they'll do things like they'll – bastardize their back issues by releasing facsimile editions or true believers editions or dollar versions rather than using them as marketing. And the point that I had made on the video was if Marvel had say put out a checklist promo checklist, like they send those kind of promo cards to LCSs with all of the original 2099 books and, and kind of like incentivized and encouraged LCS owners to Build a back issue section. Build a little wall. Build a display. I'm a merchandising. I'll say that uh, sounds like retail, retail right there. Yeah. Building an end cap. <laughs> right. That's what I. That's what I do. And um, if you'd had three to four months, I mean, these were announced what at like 
New York Comic Con time, San Diego, or before that, I think San Diego Comic Con, we knew that 2099 was coming. Um, so we've had months to kind of plan a program, but it wasn't done. And I think that, that because of that, when you're going to introduce this many, say, different characters or one shots, you really have to be creative about how you're, you're going about your marketing. And I just think they're dropping the ball and they're leaving it up to mom and pop shops to kind of come up with their own work. For that reason, that's why I think it's down. Let us know in the comments section why you think it's down. But either way, on the back issue market, it's a, it's a total miss. Not only let us know what comments on that pick, but the entire three down portion and the entire three up portion as well. Let us know your comments. What are your three up, three down picks? Never know, they might be featured on the next episode of this video. But either way, there's our three up, three down for this week. Make sure you guys tune in next week for another three up, three down. And make sure you guys tune in tomorrow night for the Bolo Show.